first of all, I want to say, um, you know, when you've done, when you have done and prayed, and you have something you believe God has asked you to share, and you're very fine and you're okay, then, as you're about to leave, and He says to you, this is what I want you to talk about. Praise the Lord. And Amen. The Lord said, I should encourage His people today. Praise the Lord. He said, I should encourage His people. And He said to me, actually, um, talk to them on the waiting period. Waiting period. Things to do and things not to do during your waiting period. Praise the Lord. And I was asking the Lord, what is the waiting period? The waiting period is that period from when there is a promise to when that promise is manifested. Praise the Lord. Some people will say, from thought says the Lord, and it came to pass. Praise the Lord. It's a waiting period. Some waiting periods can be lengthy, some can be shortened. But for every promise coming to pass, there is always a waiting period. Praise the Lord. And he says, during the waiting period, what should I be involved in? Amen. In our work with the Lord, there is always what? A waiting period. From the time of conception to the time a child is born, it's a waiting period. Praise the Lord. From the time you write your exams till the time the results are released, that is a waiting period. Praise the Lord. From the time there is a prophetic word over your life, to the time when that prophetic word comes to manifestation fully, there is a waiting period. Praise the Lord. But the good news today for you and for me is when the Lord has made a promise, it will always come to pass. Praise the Lord. But the challenge is God lives in a timeless region and will live in a time-bound region. Praise the Lord. So, you can't use your timing to determine when God's timing is right. And because you don't know when it is right, what do you do? Praise the Lord. I tell us, not every child that is conceived is given birth to true or false. Some are aborted. Some get to steal birth. But some come to life. Praise the Lord. And for everything God has spoken, the problem is not with the Lord. The problem is with you and with me. Praise the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. Job chapter 42, verse 2. Are we there? Amen. Habakkuk. And now we should have it up by heart. Praise the Lord. Can we read it together? Two things, praise the Lord, is for an appointed time. That time is not defined. It is in the hands of our God. Praise the Lord. Then, he says, but at the end it will speak, it will not die. Lie. It says, do it tarries, wait for it. Because what? It shall surely. When the Lord uses the word surely, for God, surely is what? Surely. What it means is when the day breaks, the next thing is that night must come. Praise the Lord. And when night comes, it doesn't matter how long it takes, day must what? Break. He says it must what? Surely come to pass. Job chapter 42 verse 2.
Amen. Hallelujah. Can we look at this? He says, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Can you look at it from NIV? He says, no plans of yours can be what? Thwarted. Amen. I know you can do all things. No plans of yours. Whatsoever God has spoken concerning your life, concerning our nation, concerning Jesus' God project, mercy ministry, cannot be thwarted. Praise the Lord. Why? Because he who has made the promise has the capacity to bring it to pass. And when he says, surely, he surely, he surely, praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. This is Jesus saying that himself. Are we there? Amen. Can we read it together? I love this scripture. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away. My will will what? Never. He says what? Never pass away. You can see how wonderfully God picks his words. He doesn't pick his words carelessly. He says, my word will never pass away. What has he said to you? Praise the Lord. We are going to take some examples of people that God spoke to. They held on to the law and God brought it to pass. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying it might take you one day. Some of them you will see how long it took them. But the truth is, it came to pass. And when it comes to pass, you are encouraged. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 12. Are we there? Verse 7. Let's look at it. We're looking at God's promises to a man called Abraham. Are we there? Amen. He says, The Lord has said to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Go to verse 13. Oh, sorry. Chapter 13. Verse 16. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Praise the Lord. If you go through that scripture, if you go, you will see that there is a progression. In chapter 12, he said to him, Leave your father's house. Do this, do that. I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. I will, I will. In chapter 13, he told him, Your offspring. At this point, Abraham had no child. Praise the Lord. But God was speaking. Amen. Chapter 15, verse 15. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace. No, no. Praise the Lord. Chapter 22, verse 17. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sun on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. This man does not have one descendant. Praise the Lord. And God was still what? Talking. He was still what? Talking. He was still what? Talking. God did not change what he has said. Two years ago, he said something to you, probably. Ten years ago, he said something to you, probably. And he has consistently been saying the same thing. Praise the Lord. 
and you've not seen the manifestation, brother, sister, hold on. God does not talk carelessly. Praise the Lord. 26, Genesis chapter 26, 4 to 3 to 4. The same man. Amen. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all this land, and will confirm the oath I swore to you, to your father Abraham. Praise the Lord. Now he was talking to the son. Amen. What has God spoken? Brethren, hold on to God. Don't cry. Hold on to God. Now, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 that we read, God promised Abraham wealth and children. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. Let's look at that one and see whether God fulfilled. You know, the truth is, he makes a blanket promise to you. He decides where to start from. Praise the Lord. Look at Abraham. He says, and Abraham had become what? Very wealthy in livestock and in silver and in gold. Was that a fulfillment? But Abraham's mind was somewhere. Praise the Lord. At the point, he said to the Lord, Genesis chapter 15, 2 to 6. Can we read it? And Abraham said, O oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain? One of our sisters, the Lord said to her, I will give you a house. Praise the Lord. I will buy you a car. Then I will give you the children. Praise the Lord. I wish she was lucky. God defined the sequence to her. Amen. And they came to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you might be looking at A, and God is coming from B. But the good thing is, what he has promised, has he been able to fulfill it? The answer is, yes. Praise the Lord. Joseph was another person. Can we look at Genesis chapter 35? 37, 5 to 10. Amen. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. And he said to them, listen to this dream I have. 7. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my shield arose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to rule over us? Will you actually rule over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream. And what he had said. First. Then. Can somebody say then? Yes. He had another dream. Can somebody say another one? another one? And he told to his brothers. Listen, he said. I had another dream. And this time, the sun and the moon. And eleven stars were bowing down to him. And when he told his father as well as his brothers. His father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you have? Did your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to you to the ground before you? That was a revelation from the throne room of God. Praise the Lord. Did he manifest eventually? Was there a process? Brother, Sister, within the waiting period, you'll be deceiving yourself, thinking that the enemy is at peace. Did you hear me? Once 
there is, especially in this kind of ministry we operate, where the law speaks, others will hear, you will hear. Amen. For the case of Joseph, within the period of waiting, the enemy is always at work. Look at that same scripture, Genesis chapter 37, 18 to 20. 18 to 20. But they saw him in a distance. I want you to look at this scripture. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. My problem is not that they plotted to kill their brother. Look at the next verse. Can we read it together? Verse 20.
No, first Samuel chapter 16. Chapter 18, sorry. 8 to, no, 8 to 10. First Samuel 18, 8 to 10. Praise the Lord. Saul was very angry. These refrain God him. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought. But me, with only thousands. What more can he get for the kingdom? And from that time, Saul so kept a jealous eye on David. Ten. The next day, an evil spirit from the Lord came forth free of all Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the harp, as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand. Eleven. And he hauled it, saying to himself, I will pin David to the wall. But David included him twice. When God has spoken, and you are in a line with God, every effort the enemy will do to stop what God has planned and proposed for you will not work. Can somebody say will not work? Why? He who has spoken has the capacity to bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. These people we are talking about, including Jesus, a prophecy was made over his life. But when he was given birth to, I want us to look at Matthew chapter 2. You know, if you look at Isaiah chapter 9, 6 to 7, let's look at it. You will understand what God said about him. Isaiah chapter 9, 6 to 7. For, um, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the job, government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and peace there shall be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the, of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The devil had, will have no end. Can you go back to King James or New King James? In Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 3. Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 3. Now, after many years, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem too, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. 3. When Herod the king had this, he was what? Trouble. And we know the rest is history. He made sure all the children from two years to zero were what? Mother. Thinking Jesus must be one of them. Was Jesus one of them? Look, brethren, the devil does not have the capacity to contend with our God. Did you hear that? We all we need to do is what align with our God. The Bible said in Psalms chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, why do the heathens rage and the people what imagine a thing thing? 
It doesn't matter what people are imagining. It doesn't matter what demons are imagining. It doesn't matter what strategies they are putting in place. Once God has spoken, believe his word, praise the Lord, he will bring it to pass. In your waiting period, brother, sister, what do you do? Two things you want to do. Don't complain. Praise the Lord. Don't mourn. It might take a while. It might take some years. It might take some days. But I want you to say, the Bible says, He has, who has promised is faithful. He will bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. For Abraham, the Bible says he waited. He did not waver in his faith. And it was what accounted unto him as unto what? Righteousness. Promise was made. It took him like 25 years before Isaac was born. But was Isaac born? Yes. Praise the Lord. I have something I wrote here. The Lord said to me, when you are waiting, pray. Praise the Lord. When you are waiting, do what? Pray. Don't complain. He says to me, prayers produce results. Complaining brings destruction. Praise the Lord. In the time of waiting, pray. Don't complain. How do you do that? Remind the Lord of his promises. Praise the Lord. That is why in Jesus' is Lord Project Mercy Ministry, you are encouraged to keep the journal. Praise the Lord. The journal does two things for you. They help you because we can easily forget. Praise the Lord. They help you remember what God has said. They equally help you thank God. Over years, when you go through your journals and you begin to see, oh my goodness, God promised this and he did that. God promised this and he did that. God, at times, you forget yourself and you begin to dance. Praise the Lord. But if you don't have a journal, the tendency is that you will forget. Praise the Lord. And that is why the Bible says, write it word down. So that when it is accomplished, you will give testimony. Praise the Lord. Remind the Lord of all the things he has said. Not with complaining, not with grumbling. Praise the Lord. Some of us go into our place of prayer with our journal. We present them. Instead of using them to pray, we use them to what? Grumble and complain. Praise the Lord. In Genesis chapter 15, 2 to 16 we read, Abraham did not go into the presence of the Lord to complain. Praise the Lord. He went there to argue his case. Praise the Lord. There is a difference between going, you know, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 21. Can we look at it? Isaiah chapter 24, 41, verse 21. Amen. Can we read it together? Present what your case says the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons. What are your strong reasons? Father, on so, 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 and so day, this is what you said. Praise the Lord. By your servant, you said this. And the Bible says, your, the same word of your says, you confirm the word of your servant, what the prophet. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. 
Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. Amen. Now, when the people complained, it is. Can we read it together, brethren? And it came to pass 
after these things that his master's brethren, when you begin to have an unusual level of temptations, okay, know that your breakthrough is around the corner. The enemy is flooding you with challenges. So, you know, mouth watering offers that will compromise your stand. Know that you are at the verge of your breakthrough. Praise the Lord. That once you compromise, he takes it against you. This is somebody that has been living in the same house. All of a sudden, a veil was removed from the madam's eyes. And he, she began to see that this young boy, what is it that is your problem? Praise the Lord. I can make life so rosy for you. Promises upon promises. Praise the Lord. And it was not one thing, and it will never be one thing. Praise the Lord. So when your boss in the office makes you an offer for that next level of promotion, and you turn it down, don't think it's going to end like that day. Praise the Lord. He will pressure and pressure and pressure, and you say no. He will start to tighten up some things, and start to blackmail you, and start to do some things, just to make sure you succumb. But the truth is that you serve a God who it wouldn't take anything to make a shift so that you can be showcased. Don't think that your promotion is in the hands of your boss. The Bible says, promotion neither comes from the east nor from the west. Promotion comes from... If you have that understanding, a lot of things will be settled. Praise the Lord. Yes, let's go on. And he says, cast longing eyes on Jacob and said to and, and she said, lie with me. Verse 8. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has in my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? Can we complete it? And what? God was his main agenda. God. And at this point, only God knows whether he still remembered his dreams. Praise the Lord. But you know what? You may forget what God has spoken to you about. But God will never forget. And that was why when his brothers came, he said to them, you intended it for good evil, but God intended it for good. The saving of lives that your people are experiencing today. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, 24 to 26. Hebrews, don't play with sin. That's what we are looking at. Hebrews 24, yes. By faith, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the words blessing pleasures of sin. If somebody tells you sin is not sweet, that person is lying. Praise the Lord. There are some things that are sweet. Your salary is 10,000 naira. And you do small backyard business and you get 100,000 naira. As you are enjoying the money, is it not sweet? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But Moses knew where he is going. Two things. He refused to be called the prince of Egypt. Praise the Lord. And remember as at that time, Pharaoh was the strongest king upon the earth. He refused to answer a member of that. He preferred 
to suffer with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. We need to do the same. Praise the Lord. Another thing we need to do in our waiting period, we need to be wise. Praise the Lord. We need to be wise. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14, it says, David was wise in all his dealings. Praise the Lord. Again, use your testimonies. What has God done in this place? You know, in this work, I tell you, if you tell yourself you will remain on that mountain top, you must be joking. Praise the Lord. At times, the devil will just give you a sliding tackle and you see yourself on the ground. Praise the Lord. And you begin to wonder, this promise, you know, a man of God was saying, somebody said, Praise the Lord. This thing this person is saying, is he sure of it? Praise the Lord. There is always a time. But let's look at a man that made use of that. And it has a way of boosting your morale. First Samuel chapter 17, 34 to 37. First Samuel 17, 34 to 37. My time is almost up. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the floor, continue. I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Verse 36. He said, Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Praise the Lord. See that what? He has defiled the arms of the living God. When you recount your testimony, your faith soars. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, we overcame. By what? By the blood of the Lamb. And by what? Word of our testimony. In this waiting period, remember the things God has done in the past. Build your faith based on those things. Even if you can't remember anyone, remember the ones he has done in the ministry. Praise the Lord. And tell yourself, that same God that did this one has the capacity to do it for me because he has not changed. Praise the Lord. And besides, we are in the same building. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says, use your testimonies as a reminder to yourself about God's faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Then, what next am I to do? Honor the anointed. Praise the Lord. Honor the anointed. Cease from being in the company of those that are always criticizing the anointed. Praise the Lord. The Lord says, touch not my anointed. And to my prophet Noah, it is not all about stabbing, stabbing them. No, in this time of social media, so many things are going on. Don't say a word concerning the Lord's anointed. David had the capacity of killing Saul when Saul was after his life. Even when his colleagues and contemporaries said to him, You can see, God has delivered your enemy into your hands. They had every justification. And he said, No way. I cannot touch the Lord's anointed. Besides, he is my master. Don't say any word against the Lord's anointed. Praise the Lord. Then, constantly make positive confessions based on what the Lord has told you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4, verse 17, Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. I will do to you the exact things I had you say. The Bible says, you, you know, we call it those things that be not as if they 
were and they come to pass. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Constantly, constantly declare what the Lord has said. It doesn't matter. You can be declaring it and you can be declaring it in tongues. You can just be declaring it. God said, I will bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. Finally, Romans 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who had believed God. He gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though. Praise the Lord. That is our God. As you begin to make those confessions, Father, this is what you said. He begins to bring them to pass. Finally, engage the weapon of praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Instead of complaining, as you speak in tongues, give God praise. Praise the Lord. As you're walking on the road and you remember, the devil of will tell you, another month has come to pass. Praise the Lord. A woman looking for the issue. You woke up one morning and you saw some things that is a proof that last month didn't all go well. Praise the Lord. And your anointing leaks. No! Get up and begin to declare what God has said. Amen. And then engage the weapon of what? Praise and thanksgiving. Give God praise. When Jesus was heading towards the tomb of Lazarus, the sisters that were crying protested. Praise the Lord. When he now gave the further instruction, remove the stone. You can't try that. This man will be stinking by now. But when Jesus got there, what did he say? Father, I thank you. It doesn't matter. It might be difficult. But say, I believe your report. And because I believe your report, I am saying, thank you. The day you will turn it around, you will be like a dreamer. Just like that. And God knows how to do it just like that. Praise the Lord. Just a phone call. And that story is over. Just the phone call. Amen. May that be our portion in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father. We give you praise. Yes, the intercessors are coming to take some level of prayers. You know, so that what? And I believe there is nobody seated here who is not waiting for one thing or the other from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah.